Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Nectario, on how to set up mineral ray subsurface scattering with a physical sun and sky. Okay, so to illustrate this, I have the werewolf from the Maya Modeling Techniques Werewolves course, and I have a simple three-point lighting uh, as well as subsurface scattering on this guy. So let's just go ahead and render this out to see what we're working with. And as we see, the result that we get back is uh, very simple. Um, but let's say I'm happy with this, and I'd like to bring in the physical sun and sky. So I'm just going to save this off, and let's open up our render settings. And in here, under the un indirect lighting tab, we can create a physical sun and sky. So I'll just go ahead and click Create. And let's come back here and render this guy back out. Well, the result that we get back looks uh, well, pretty bad. Um, but to know why this is happening, we really have to realize how Metal Ray sets up the physical sun and sky. Now, if we notice, when we created the physical sun and sky, it automatically turned on Final Gathering. This is because the skylight in the background uh, for the physical sun and sky is considered to be indirect lighting. So what does that have to do with our subsurface material? Well, by default, the subsurface scattering materials don't take indirect lighting into account. So we need to enable that. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Okay, so real fast, I'm just going to save this render out. And we want to go to our material. So I'm going to open up the hypershade here. We can see we have just a default uh, subsurface scattering fast skin shader. Well, if we select the shader, we don't want to come down um, actually into the shader group. Let's open up the light map for this group. Now under there we'll see an option to turn on or include indirect lighting. Okay, so if we check this and come back in and render this out, the result that we get back uh, really isn't too much different from previously. Well, we do notice it took quite a bit more time to render. Well, that's because it is including the indirect lighting the values are still being clamped. So there's actually another uh, parameter that we're going to need to change. Okay, so uh, what we want to do is in the actual material node or the shader node itself, we can come down to the algorithm control. And we want to turn off our screen composite, and that will tell Maya to, or Minoray, to not uh, clamp those values. So with uh, that unchecked, let's come back in here and re render this guy. The result that we get back this time is that we're seeing we're getting a uh, our subsurface effect. But it's still really blown out. Now, uh, the reason for that is because we already had some lighting set up, and then we added additional lighting on top of it by adding the physical sun and sky. Uh, so we may want to come into our uh, render settings here and open up the physical sun and sky and maybe bring this down a little bit to help with some of this blown out area here. And this time the render is looking uh, much better here. Now we could continue to tweak the lighting of our sun and sky to get whatever look we need. Uh, if you want to learn how you can do that, then check out the Introduction to Mental Ray in Maya 2009 course. But that's a quick look at how we can get our subsurface scattering to work with the physical sun and sky. One, by turning on the Include Indirect Lighting, and then by coming in and turning off the Screen Composite.